historic Long Island Railroad trains in Riverhead. Stay with us. Welcome back to the East End. Our next stop is Riverhead, actually right by the Riverhead train station. If you ever drive by, you may have noticed some of the old-fashioned Long Island Railroad cars. Well, they were brought here by the Railroad Museum of Long Island. Joining me, one of the members, the vice president of the group, in fact, Al Cohen. Al, good to see you. Doug, my pleasure. Good to meet you and good to have News 12 here. Oh, this is a great, great sight. You have some terrific things here. Thank you. This is, uh, what, a caboose, obviously. This is a 1963 Long Island Railroad caboose. Uh, we use it for a number of purposes here at the Railroad Museum. Now, what, what is a caboose? What, did passengers sit in there? What was it used now, for? Now, this was used by uh, freight trains and freight train crews in the bay window windows. They would look at the train to make sure there were no problems with hot journal boxes or overheating of the cars. Oh, so this was sort of a vantage point. So there at the end kind of as a troubleshooting. This was the last kind of car of the train. Okay. Why don't we take a peek inside? Good. Al, you actually use the caboose, or your group does, as its office. Yes, we use the uh, caboose for a number of different purposes, Doug. We use it as a uh, meeting room. We use it as a lunch room. We also use it in the summertime when it's hot and steamy outside and we're working on the equipment. We come in here, we open both doors, and we get a nice flow of air. This is the bay window area you were talking this about. This is the bay window the windows on either end and of course on the other side as well where the crew members would watch the train make sure there were no hot spots or any uh, bad things happening with the equipment and uh, was a vantage point for the train crew. Al, tell me about your group a little bit. You're uh, volunteers, train yeah, buffs? Yeah, we are an all-volunteer group. The organization was founded in March of 1990s. So we've got an eight, eight year anniversary coming up. We are all-volunteer. We are Nonprofit organization. We have our nonprofit 501c3 status from the IRS, and we had two objectives when the organization was formed. One was to preserve and protect the equipment you see here, and secondly was the uh, illustration and uh, showing the uh, railroading history of Long Island. Al, this is a very impressive looking uh, engine. What is this that we're on? This is uh, an Alco RS3 diesel engine. Uh, it was built in 1955 and was used in service uh, on many branches of the Long Island Railroad. Now, this is one of two engines that you have on site here? Right. Right face-to-face -face with this engine is our crown jewel, our focal point, which is steam engine 39, which okay. we will talk about in a few minutes. What else do you have here? Well, over there at the far end, we have a 1914 combine. Combine, okay, explain that. What is that? Combine mean? is a combination passenger and baggage car. Wow, that goes back to 1914? 1914. How Built old is the railroad? The Long Island Railroad was uh, organized and incorporated in 1834. 1834. 1834, I don't think most people realize that. And by 1844, there was steam service to Greenport, which is about 20 some odd miles east of here. What was 1834, what was the railroad doing way back then? I mean, there weren't, uh, you know, workers going into Manhattan and Penn Station. What was the primary use of the railroad way back well, then? Well, the railroad then was really uh, a means to get people from New York to Boston. Since there was no overland route, they would have to come via Long Island, then hop a ferry back to the mainland. So oh, this was a route from New York to New England so we were, via Long Island. We were kind of a stepping stone, huh, for the indeed, New York to Boston indeed people. Indeed it was, right. What else do we have here, Al? Over here we have a 1928 baggage car. And as you look at the color, uh, the paint scheme of the car, it is in the Dashing Dan uh, paint scheme of the 50s and 60s. Our oldest piece of equipment, is a 1910 RPO. RPO, and RPO that stands is for Railway it. Post Office car. It was built in 1910 by the American Car and Foundry Company. Al, I have to say this is one of my most favorite cars. This is a double-decker passenger car? Yeah, this is a very unusual and interesting car, Doug. Uh, it was built in 1932. Uh, it was a joint effort between the uh, Pennsylvania Railroad and uh, the Alco Aluminum Company of Pittsburgh. And you were uh, telling me that double-decker cars were used in the railroad actually right up to the 70s. Right. Uh, these cars were built in the 30s and then into the 40s. They were in use through the late 60s, early 70s, and then 
The last of the double-deckers were scrapped in uh, the early 70s, except for 200, which we're sitting in now. I got to imagine this must be very big with the kids, I would think, right? Uh, the kids love it. People love it. Again, uh, the caboose, this car, uh, is a big attraction. How many uh, people did this hold, this, the double-deck car as opposed to a regular Capacity one? of this car was a little over 100 people, so it did improve the capacity greatly. Uh, normal car would be about? About 70, 80 people yeah. at that point in time. So it did increase capacity and was uh, very profitable from a revenue point of view. Okay, yeah, we've saved the best for last. This is a very, very impressive looking engine. Tell us about this. This is our steam engine number 39. Its official designation is G5S for identification purposes. It was built in 1929 by the Pennsylvania Railroad for the Long Island Railroad and was one of 31 such engines built for the LIRR. Okay, Al, where you're standing is, uh, I guess, where years ago the coal would be shoveled in? Yeah, that is the firebox. Uh, the coal would be shoveled in by the firemen to create uh, what we call a perfect fire. And the temperature on that was about 3,000 degrees, so it was a white hot fire, but it had to be in order to propel the uh, engine efficiently and properly. 3,000 degrees. 3,000 degrees. Unbelievable. Now, you're actually going to try to, one of the main missions of your group is to restore this engine to working uh, condition. Yes. As a matter of fact, we hope to restore 39 to working order in about two years. And at this point, uh, would like to give some uh, much needed thanks. Our application for $800,000 in funds was uh, sponsored by Suffolk County. So our first set of thanks goes to Suffolk County and the county executive, Mr. Bob Gaffney. And our second set of thanks goes to the Suffolk County Legislature for, a pr for approving $160,000 uh, from the Suffolk County capital budget to 39's restoration. We are indebted to both. And last year also you got a donation of land for some yes, expansion. Yes, uh, at the end of 97, uh, we were given, or the recipient of an acre of land, uh, a set of thanks to the Nassau Suffolk Lumber Company for their incredibly generous donation. That enables the museum to uh, increase our scope here in Riverhead and start developing a true steam tourist facility here in Riverhead. Hal, you're all volunteers. W what is it that attracts you so much to these uh, trains? Well, my real interest uh, in trains started, I guess, in the early 80s. And then uh, having seen 39 some years ago, I decided to join the organization. And to me, uh, I guess this, this engine sort of epitomizes how I feel about railroading. My feeling is that there is absolutely nothing like the sound, the thunder, the feel, and the aura of steam. And in a couple of years, we will be part of that. And again, we hope to run between Riverhead and Greenport in limited steam excursion service, initially weekends only. The run from here to Greenport will be about half an hour and with uh, hopefully some stops in between uh, and give our passengers a chance to look at and enjoy the North Fork, which is an incredible part of Long Island. Al, a great tour. Thank you very much. Good luck to your group. It's our pleasure. We, we enjoyed having you here, and uh, we hope we'll see you out in Greenport at our other museum facility. If you'd like to take a closer look at these trains and come aboard, you can do so virtually any Saturday year-round, right by the Riverhead train station. The Railway Museum out in Greenport will be open after Memorial Day. If you'd like more information about the Railroad Museum of Long Island, if you'd like to join the group, perhaps make a donation, you can write to them at P.O. Box 726, Greenport, 11944. Well, I can't think of a more appropriate place to end this show than on a caboose. I'm Doug Geed. Hope you enjoyed watching. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and we'll see you next time on the East End.